the objectives of this model are to show pathways to deriving benefits from mineral development, to show the benefits from mineral resources development to citizens of our society. Thirdly, to show linkages with various stakeholders and the importance of a coordinated approach in order to derive such benefits. We will follow the following agenda to we will look at opportunities that the sector accords to society. We will then look at the pathways by which benefits accrue. We will then discuss the actions that are required. We will then suggest how monitoring um, is based on and then the next stage. Opportunities. Occurrences of mineral resources are a blessing to host countries. We've been told and we've read in a lot of literature that they are seen as a case, but let's take a positive approach that mineral currencies are a blessing to host countries because they provide opportunities for human development, opportunities for human well-being, for human advancement. These are one-time opportunities because extraction can only continue where minerals exist and these deplete over time and therefore these opportunities occur only over a fixed time period and therefore they require deliberate actions for benefits to occur. It's not natural that once you have mineral resources and you mine them you get the benefits. These, these, the benefits accruing from them require deliberate decisions deci you know deliberate actions and these take the form of appropriate policies strategies and actions and these emanate from national policies and the objectives that that countries pursue. These um, take the form of natural na national mineral policies or country mining visions or national policies that are aligned to African mining vision at the national level you then have regional mining vision at the regional at the regional community economic community level and at the apex we have the africa mining vision which provide coordinated approach and scale economy opportunities which we hope to um, achieve at the african Phase-wise pathway through which benefits accrue to an economy. Pathways are dependent on the development objectives and national and, and level of mineral development and mineral economy. In other words, to, to follow these uh, objectives, you need a clear understanding of national development objectives because the sector contributes to national objectives. It's supposed to meet the national objectives together with the other sectors of the economy. So entities, both local and foreign companies, 
invest in mineral development activities when conditions that are set up by the, the, the local economies are conducive. And these, these conditions are determined by the need for achieving national development objectives. So benefits accrue through phase-wise pathway by deliberate policy actions that are chosen by government towards capturing the rent and management of the same. These are through revenues by way of taxes, duties, and others paid by license holders. Secondly, by activities of mining um, companies, um, linkages and mineral management, and diversification. Because as we had mentioned earlier on, benefits accruing from mineral resources are time dependent because minerals deplete and we must convert the one time dependent benefits into, into sustainable sectors of the economy through diversification. The diagram, the pathway diagram shows four pathways. We start from stage one. These are policy actions emanating from government, object, government objectives. You have policy actions that will then lead to the derivation of revenues that are paid by companies and then company activities what you then need is to link the sector and manage effectively for diversification so this leads to sustainability deriving from the mining sector which is depleting with time Path one, every mineral economy or anyone that is, any economy that is wishing to go to develop its mineral resources must define and set its all-encompassing long-term objectives. In other words, how are, the, how are all sectors of the economy going to contribute to the national objectives and how is each one of the economy going to make a contribution to to the economy how are they going to interrelate so that each one of them contributes effectively to the national economy so based on the level of the mineral economy's maturity and enabling environment for mining, policy actions towards regulating the mineral regime, i.e. on mineral management and how companies operate must be set up front. So that there should not be any ambiguity on on invest on investors what is expected of them and how they should participate in that policy environment so mining is a continuum activity in other words policies must be drafted right from exploration to mine closure and diversifying away from minerals to other sectors which will be growing as assets 
as the mineral sector declines. So these require strategic interventions and policy actions to obtain the maximum benefit from minerals while they are still being demanded by markets. So this next diagram indicates the fundamental um, framework where you have revenues accruing to government and government decides to how much to allocate for education, health infrastructure. This may be classified as social services. Allocate for diversification in other sectors of the economy because the mining sector would, would deplete. And how, thirdly, how much it can invest in other assets which it then decides it can decides to it can decide to to bank keep in a bank it might decide into a sovereign wealth fund and invest elsewhere so that it diversifies from the mineral sector which is time dependent the other avenue is using company activities the company companies through employment through linkages upstream downstream and side stream activities infrastructure which is used by the mine itself and other sectors of the economy skills r and d and so on all these used by the mine itself and other sectors of the economy and then of course social investment which the companies themselves invest in communities so these are the path these are the ways through which mineral resources benefit the economies and deliberate actions must be taken for each one of them. So these revenues are invested in social sectors, education, health, infrastructure, um, and which benefit citizens and can also and are also used for other sectors of the economy diversification investment in other sectors of the economy agriculture and so on investment in other sectors other assets that will increase in value as mineral resources deplete with time and this is where it becomes very important in mineral resources in revenue management that at some point mineral resources will deplete and those assets will have to be replaced by in, you know, other assets that can increase in value. Through company activities as we saw above, um, they employ, they, inc they, employ um, they provide linkages to other sectors of the economy. Um, through upstream, downstream, side stream activities. Uh, they contribute to infrastructure, which is used by um, all sectors of the economy, skills, R&D, and so on. They also uh, invest in, in, in communities and the, the surrounding mining areas. The potential benefits have a limited time as minerals are depleting assets. And this is extremely critical. It's very important. And it must be um, um, taken as a, as a base, clear understanding. The 
films project I'm mentioning here you may wish to have a look at uh, is a project of the AFDB promoting the management of fiscal resources emanating from uh, minor rich countries. This is this diagram shows the timing of opportunities availing to societies. You have exploration, you, in, you have exploration, mining, construction, operations, and closure. Uh, in, in, in mining, for instance, exploration is normally anything between three and ten years, planning anything between two to seven years, all these could vary, but these are just typical. Construction, anything between two to four years, could be more, and um, operations would take several decades. It also depends on the, on the um, reserves, and closure will be anything between two in five years. In the oil sector, it's um, times, well, uh, reasonable, three to five in exploration, planning four to seven, construction four to five, several decades, closure two to three years. Now, those in the framework, for instance, that we showed above, the, the the revenues accruing will start from the start of operations. That's where you now plan for getting your taxes that can then be used in social sectors. The second as well, uh, public spending in growth and diversification. You only start when operations, when mining operations, operations start because that's when taxes and revenues accrue to government. But uh, opportunities deriving from um, Route 3, uh, deriving from companies' investment in employment procurement starts from the planning stage. So in other words, decision, appropriate decisions by government on how they can benefit from 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 um, uh, companies should be clear right up front because that's where you you get benefits long before you start getting taxes and then social investments you start at construction level and you can you can steer companies social investments from that point right up to closure. So this is the sort of time frame that gives the policy planners the opportunities to benefit from, from mineral resource development. So the contribution of the sector to the economy, as we are saying, um, um, in, in, terms of, in terms of social investments, in education and so on will depend on the magnitude and stability of retained revenues and how these revenues are utilized. In other words, you need your, your, your fiscal regime, you need your management and also your investment uh, policies and strategies that involve the whole range of stakeholders in order to benefit maximally. So this underscores interministerial coordination and collaboration with many stakeholders who are who have the range of um, skill competencies. It is the hallmark for the sector to contribute to the broader economy. At the sector level, a number of niche initiatives are appropriate, which are 
you know, policies, laws, regulations, strategies, standards, agreements, stability, and so on. Uh, and this, this provide the overall framework. You need appropriate fiscal regimes because they play um, a critical role. One, um, they promote investment depending upon how you 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 rework them. They will be they should be attractive. Second, secondly, they should be able to to be to maximize revenues, appropriate instruments to maximize revenue abstraction. Um, thirdly, they should be able to provide incentives for certain actions and behaviors to to okay the ones that you want to okay. In, for example, in terms of um, compliance, e um, environmental compliance, or training, and so on, you can use fiscal regimes. Um, you need to minimize risk by availing, for instance, geological information. Um, minimize changes in law and uncertainties, etc. Um, environmental and social issues, um, critical environmental mitigation, rehabilitation issues, health and safety, and so on. There's a, the whole range of environmental and social issues that need proper crafting and compliance uh, management. Then, of course, are issues of competitiveness. You have the availability of infrastructure, land access, and so on, and how these can coexist with the other sectors of the economy. And there are a number of um, um, initiatives and actions that are that need to be considered at the sector level. All these need um, appropriate skills and competences. And all these are consistent with the AMV themes. There is nothing untoward about country activities and the AMV themes. Beyond ensuring revenue generation, delivery is spread firmly with the other sectors of the economy. So in other words, the mining sector should not be seen as, as a, as a, pre, as a um, um, as a responsibility on the ministry responsible for mineral resources development. Most member states take this pathway of revenue generation as a key for meeting human development needs. For example, Zambia and DRC. Key therefore is the utilization or distribution of revenues for sustained development beyond the life of minerals. So sector support should therefore should therefore be given to what the national objectives aim to achieve. Industry activities are emphasized in the AMV, showing a shift from revenues to direct linkages between the sector and the rest of the economy. Now, it is not inconsistent so, so a country will choose um, as a national objective, but that is not um, inconsistent with the AMV, except that in uh, the AMV emphasizes um, other benefits and greater benefits arising from linkages with other sectors of the economy. Such a thrust should involve, of course, all sectors because the rest of other peop other uh, stakeholders in the economy are non uh, mineral sector individuals or or
institutions and and they have to agree or or, or coordinate on strategies organizational structures and the allocation of resources which are financial material and human and in this particular case therefore the the um, um, industrial policies play a key role. Stakeholders are likely to, of course, include government that plays a facilitating role, um, communities, private sector, institutions of learning and research, civil society, foreign and local investors, and many others. Path four, diversification strategy can be based, uh, sorry, be, cons be considered based on the entire life of the mind because benefits accrue at all stages of the life of a mind and all identified resources and economic reserves of, of, mineral, of minerals in a country. So, so linkages should be able to enhance diversification path being pursued um, in a country and hence the capacity and skills um, beyond mining should be well strategized for a diversified economy in other words skills there are specific skills for the mining sector and there are other, other skills that are used elsewhere and they can be in competition with and they can also they also they also support the their use in the in the rest of the economy all productive sectors that depend on the mining sector should have long-term strategies and policies for skills, infrastructure, market, and a shift to the fourth industrial revolution, which we shall cover in the, in the third module. Green and digital economy must be the focus in diversifying away from minerals. Now, here, this diagram simply indicates that, look, it's, it's a coordinated approach right, by both the private sector and government in terms of infrastructure, which is infrastructure which, which, which the private sector um, um, must be interested and is interested because it is key. You're talking about um, power, you're talking about roads, you're talking about ICT, you're talking about um, um, for IR and, and so on. And government is interested in, in relation to regional development and linking all these to other sectors of the economy. The private sector or participates in social investment and the government um, through community and local uh, government participates in social development and this is a key element of uh, government prime um, um, thrust. Government is interested in skills development with the private sector is interested in training for its operations and these will link together because government also is interested in the broader economy skills for the broader economy and the mineral sector and we also want the mineral sector to contribute and link to other sectors of the economy so there is um, serious synergy in in these um, private sector relies on procurement of inputs of it input and government is interested in 
in its industrial strategies, among others, to develop competences to supply um, um, goods and services to the private sector, with the private sector also participating in the development of competences in the local economy to supply the inputs required for the for its for its operations. Engagement starts with alignment of various ministries, agencies, and other institutions of government in different priorities, laws, and regulations. In other words, when you have developed a national mineral policy or a country mining vision through a participatory uh, process, it is vital, it is critical that an implementation plan be developed using the same stakeholders and, and, and participants because the implementation plan sets out what needs to be done, who will be involved in implementing and the timing and the various resources that are required. It is extremely critical that all stakeholders participate and define what they can do and what is achievable. At the end of the day, the society or stakeholders or participants do not look at the national mineral policy or a country mining vision, the participants always look at what is being implemented. They never refer to the policies. They refer to what is being practiced. So it should not be the, um, the, the responsibility of only the ministry or department or entity responsible for mineral development that should develop an implementation plan. Otherwise, otherwise there will be a complete um, denial, right, of responsibility um, at the implementation stage. So, you then that's why it is extreme. That's when it is at this stage we have to agree who is going to do to implement what at what stage and what sort of involvement there is there then should be a program alignment amongst the stakeholders or participants and government then should provide sufficient resources and um, um, government should also provide a supportive political governance and consistency, especially where there is a change of political leadership, because all these things fall in cracks, especially when the implementation plan has not been agreed by all stakeholders. Regional states should align and harmonize their regime's policies with the broader sub-regional and continental frameworks. And this is a subject for another day. An action plan should involve all stakeholders since it entails agreeing on strategies, organizational structures, and allocation of resources. Um, this cannot be overemphasized because the, the national mineral policy or country mining vision is not referred to at implementation stage. So an action plan should be agreed upon by all stakeholders in order that implementation can be tracked and traced back to where it came from. Monitoring. Monitoring progress in this regard requires 
completing the required prioritized actions as planned. You remember we initially said that all stakeholders must be involved in, in, in designing an action plan after a national mineral policy has been agreed or a country mining vision has been agreed. An action plan must be developed by the participants because then they will be able to know who is going to do what, how they are going to participate and what targets they are going to meet and when. So the so these agreed ones will then be used as as benchmarks. So completing the required prioritized actions as planned is is a way now of monitoring progress. And then of course you then find out what went wrong what resources you require to improve and so on and meeting guideline targets for improved well-being or contribution to society from the sector as defined by national and regional objectives these are critical components you will not be able to 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 determine how well you're contributing to human well-being or to society if you did not set up set out action plans and targets and responsibilities so these are critical to look at and uh, very 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 critical for the delivery of the african mind therefore the initial focus should be on capacity building to implement agreed policies, strategies, and programs through stakeholder ownership, coordination, and collaboration. It's critical. So, the, so our next model will deal with this subject. Having we've covered in this module, um, the opportunities that are available that have, that mineral resources are available to society and how these opportunities can and the routes through which these these opportunities can be extracted what needs to be done you need an action plan to be to be crafted from national mineral policies or national or country mining visions agreed by by formed and agreed by the various stakeholders with targets and responsibilities and collaborate in order to implement them so so the next stage so the next module then will deal with with um, capacity building in order to make sure that all these um, elements of um, of um, um, delivery are uh, met. Thank you.